Welcome back, everyone. We are here today with a brand new Cabral Concept podcast. Every Thursday, it seems to be now a different topic, but really, it's whatever is pertinent, whatever people are writing in most about. So I have lots of questions still on uh, viruses, basically the virus, right? COVID and hair loss. So I answered that just a couple weeks back. That was such a popular episode. So again, um, I don't honestly, I don't care about how many downloads a podcast get, but I do care that that is something that people wanted to hear about, right? So that to me means a lot. So I'm telling you right now, if you have a interest on me speaking on a particular topic, first, go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts and just search it, right? Just search it by Hashimoto's or rheumatoid or hair loss or whatever it is and look at the shows that I've already done. Because remember, this is episode 2204. I've done 2,204 podcasts before. My goal with this podcast is not just to do a podcast every day. It's to talk in different topics. So very rarely do I repeat myself. I typically will refer back to that show because my goal is to create an archive of shows that are evergreen. Meaning like when I help people with functional medicine detoxification, <clears throat> excuse me, heavy metal detox, boosting your immunity, wellness protocols for kids, herpes, shingles, Hashimoto's, psoriasis, eczema, cradle cap, rheumatoid, or I said rheumatoid, uh, Addison's disease, you know, like all of these things that it's not going to change. It's just not. It's really not. And the reason is that you're, if you believe that, you're looking at natural health more like conventional medicine. You're waiting for the new drug or the new whatever to come out. And I'm sorry, that's just not going to happen. It's just not. We're going to get better, faster ways of detecting it, better at-home lab testing, more convenient at-home lab tests in the future where you'll be able to literally test with uh, your iPhone or, or phone in general uh, right at home, same day. Like It's going to get better that way. There's no doubt about it. But when you're talking about protocols, what are we talking about? We're talking about vitamins, minerals, natural chelators, natural binders, phase one, phase two detox uh, components, it's not going to change dramatically. It's just not. Meaning like the products will get better by degree. So we just came out with, a, for example, a product cell boost. I wasn't planning on talking about this today because we're going to be talking about the four factors that lead to long COVID. But you have to understand that this is a this is a breakthrough product. There's no doubt about that. Okay. So why is it a breakthrough product? Well, we know about uh, NAD. We know we know about nicotinamide mononucleotide. We know about transverse resveratrol. We know about PQQ. So what do we do? Well, these have been kind of researched over the last 10 years to maybe even a little bit longer. But now they've been proven to be safe. That's I wait for things to be safe. I don't just jump into it. I don't think that you should do that with your own health either. And then I look to see what's the minimal dosage that will give you a, a maximum effect because I don't want people to overdo anything they're using. Okay. So now we come up with that. Then we say, hey, is there any other product out there that's currently doing it? And the answer is yes, we recommend that because we recommend a lot of great brands. If you go to stephencabral.com forward slash resources, there's over a hundred different brands there, right? But we say, okay, there isn't. There's room to improve this. That's what we did. Cell Boost now has like almost a dozen clinically proven products that boost your mitochondria, which leads to more adenosine triphosphate, right? ATP. What is that? It's energy. Energy for the body, energy for the mind. It affects your immune system. It affects your mood. It affects your well-being. It's a breakthrough product, right? And what do we do? We pair that with something called Inflamasooth in the Advanced Renewal Kit. What's the advan uh, What's the uh, Inflamasooth? Uh, uh, again, humor me here just for a second. Because again, I don't doesn't mat, not matter to me if you use these or not. You have to understand that, and the reason why I'm saying this is like, okay, we've got these herbs, right? Indian frankincense is the first one. We'll just talk about that in bromelain. Okay, uh, sorry, Indian frankincense, uh, also known as boswellia. Okay, it's still the herb used in Ayurveda from six thousand years ago. What got better? Well, a patented extract called Apriflex. Why is that better? Well, it allows you to use less of it and get a better result clinically proven through scientific testing. You know, so it's like, you have to understand. And the reason why I'm saying this is just like, don't, don't, don't wait for the next best thing. Honestly, the big breakthroughs are going to come in, uh, manipulating genetics, using stem cells, figuring out the gut microbiome to a greater degree. And it's going to come in longevity, but like, don't wait for it to fix an autoimmune issue. We already know how to fix those things. We know how to fix the nervous system issues. We know how to fix the skin issues. I mean, we know how to do these things. So again, what I'm saying to you is please don't wait. Don't wait for the new shiny object. It's just, it's not going to be worth it. You can be well on your way 
And um, the only reason who do, the only people who don't get better, two reasons. One, they believe there's a silver bullet, so they're not using a multifaceted approach. And the second is they just give up. That's really it. And so again, I don't say this in a mean way, but I found myself, I find myself this year being a little bit more brass tacks, meaning that I just don't. I don't want to mix words anymore because there's so many people mixing words online and there's just so much bad information. And uh, my goal with the Cabral concept is just to cut through all that clutter and just give you exactly what works. Then you can work with a local naturopathic doctor, a integrative health practitioner. You can work with our team at Equal Life. You can do whatever you'd like, but the information I hope to provide you is there. And that brings me now to today's topic, which is the four factors that lead to long COVID. And I'm sorry about the the intro right there, five minute intro. And, And I know, that some people, hey, get get right to the topic. I get it. But the truth is that, you know, I am me on this podcast. It's not scripted. And oftentimes you're getting exactly how I'm feeling that day. And this is how I'm feeling this day. So, but how does it relate? Well, it relates this way. You're going to hear about the four factors that have now been proven to lead to long COVID. What's long COVID? Well, it's people that get the virus and they don't recover. Meaning like, okay, the virus isn't there anymore but they still feel symptoms of fatigue, brain fog, exhaustion, lethargy, low mood, low libido, low drive, like all the lows. They feel wiped out. They feel exhausted. There, we've Again, in natural health, we know why, and we just want to share this with you. So today's going to be the four factors. I don't give you the how to recover on this show, but I do on previous ones. So let me take you there right now. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2204. All right, stephencabral.com forward slash 2204. In the show notes, we will link up to previous latest virus update shows. You can even find those shows by scrolling through the top of stephencabral.com forward slash podcast Because the last two shows for viral updates was 2181 on COVID hair loss and how to regrow it. And then 2148 was long haulers virus case studies. (coughs) Excuse me, I'm getting all choked up. Long haulers virus viral case studies and solutions. Okay, so that gives you the solutions there. All right. So today, let's go over the the four reasons, because a lot of people believe it's a mystery. Like we don't know who's going to get uh, the long haulers, the post-viral uh, inflammatory syndrome, or long COVID. Again, it has a new name every four weeks, but it's still exactly the same. It's the same thing I suffered from, and I share this, way back uh, a million years ago when I had myalgic encephalomyelitis. It's myalgic encephalomyelitis it, with a new name. And conventional medicine is starting to wrap their head around that, but they kind of still don't get it because everything needs a new name because it came from a new source. But you have to understand is... The there can be multiple names for something with the same collection of symptoms. So like estrogen dominance looks really close to PCOS symptoms, which looks really close to low thyroid, right? And now there are there are nuances and there are certain underlying root causes. You need to figure out the underlying root cause. But with conventional medicine, they just want to give everything a nice little name, right? A nice little name. So if people go home, they're like, oh, I have long COVID and you know, I just need to be on these medications. I might never get well again. Well, that's again, that's how conventional medicine looks at it. With natural health, and not just natural health, integrative health, you start to go deeper and you say, why is this the case? Now, uh, finally, we have some really good information and it makes sense. So let's go through it right now. The first factor is this, first factor that leads to long COVID is total viral load. Okay, this is something they found. And it makes sense, right? All of these make sense. So one of the four factors that they found is that the more virus inside of your body that is able to replicate, the more difficult it is to overcome. Now, remember, just before I say this, all of it's able to be overcome, all right? All of it's able to be overcome. But the higher the viral load, the more challenging the recovery may be. Now, you have to ask yourself, who would have more of a higher viral load? Because everybody starts with a small viral load, okay? Okay. Meaning like everybody inhales it typically through their nose. There are other ways to get it. Don't get me wrong. But it's airborne for the most part. And most of it's through the nose. So if we look at that, we say, okay, well, you can get a lot up your nose or a little up your nose, right? But that's basic. I'm being a little uh, fundamental here, but it's the truth. So then it's how quickly does it replicate in your body? That's really what we're looking at. Over the first 72 hours, 
which is ultimately when your greater amount of uh, antibodies start to kick in. So people with an already lowered immune system and more inflammation are going to be more susceptible to a higher viral load. Is this 100% of the time? No, it's not because nothing is 100% of the time. And anybody who tells you would be incorrect. So who would be more susceptible? Well, they already know. It's all the people with comorbidities and people with unknown inflammatory issues. So <clears throat> it's the cardiovascular issues, which is inflammatory, blood pressure, which is inflammatory, blood sugar, uh, sorry, blood pressure, blood sugar, which is inflammatory, right? Or cancer-related issues. These, these are all known. If your immune system and your immune defense is already partially lowered, you're going to be more likely to have a higher viral load. And this goes directly with number two. Those people with autoimmune issues have a tendency to be more prone to long haulers, long COVID, post-viral inflammatory syndrome. Why? They already have a high level of inflammation with a deep underlying root cause that conventional medicine has not helped them with yet, right? Or nor, nor will they ever because they, or they could be put on biological drugs, right? Like lupus and rheumatoid or psoriasis. What does that do? It lowers parts of your immune system so that your immune system supposedly doesn't attack itself. Okay. So we're, we're suppressing people's immune system and we're wondering why they're more susceptible to coming under attack from this virus. You know, again, like we have to also, because we can all do this. We don't need to look at an MD for the end all be all in all medical based wisdom. You know that if you lower your immune system to suppress symptoms from an autoimmune issue, it could be a problem in the future, right? It could be because you lowered a part of your immune system. It's just something to think about. That's all. And I'm, and I'm not saying you should live with the symptoms, but again, all of these autoimmune issues have underlying root causes as well. And if you say genetics, you'd say, I would say that that's, that's the easy answer. Yes. I have rheumatoid arthritis in my genetics. I have type 2 diabetes in my genetics. I have Addison's disease in my genetics. I have mastocytosis in my genetics. I have fibromyalgia in my genetics. I had all of those things. I don't have them anymore but I have the same genetics. So we have to stop saying it's genetics. Genetics matter, but it's something that triggers, which is the environment, the terrain, the genetics themselves. And this is what we call epigenetics. So those with autoimmune issues, much greater at risk because they're, again, uh, inflammatory load. They're not able to uh, fight off the virus as well. The third one is this, reactivation. Reactivation makes a lot of sense. This does make a lot of sense. Okay, let me share this with you. Um, I'm someone that had Epstein-Barr virus when I was 17. It was part of, the, part of the way, one of the ways in which I got sick. So when I look at this and I say, okay, what else, right? There's CMV, there's HPV, there's EBV, like Epstein-Barr virus, right? All sorts of herpes-based viruses, and there is also uh, things like Lyme. Like there's, there's all sorts of issues. And, and Lyme, I wouldn't put in the same category because we're not really looking at a virus. I, I, well, again, you could, you could categorize it in different ways, but it, certainly you could, you could put it in the discussion if you'd like. If you once suffered from a viral-based issue that you've now been able to suppress and knock down, well, when your body's under attack from a big virus like COVID, it could begin to reactivate again. Why? Your body is busy at knocking down this new antigen. And then all of a sudden, well, some that little bit of Epstein-Barr virus, CMV, you know, uh, herpes-based viruses, then it gets a little bit more leeway in order to begin to replicate itself because your body is most likely keeping it suppressed. There's debate whether, you know, so there's debate, do I still have Epstein-Barr virus or uh, in my body? Or is it, you know, totally gone? Because if you run lab work, I don't have Epstein-Barr virus, right? But there's a lot of, I think, pretty good science that shows that it can reactivate. It's hidden away dormant inside your body. Now, honestly, for the sake of today's discussion, uh, that doesn't necessarily matter who's right with that one. But what I will say is, uh, especially with any herpes-based virus, that uh, those can reactivate, right? So what happens is those are inflammatory issues that exhaust your body. It's the same way that allergies exhaust your body. Think about it. If your body is fighting off pollen or dust or grass, it, you're, you're exhausted. Why? Well, there's a whole war going on inside your body. 
There's all sorts of immune cells going on, and they're attacking all those little antigens, pollen, uh, dust, or herpes-based uh, viral load, and that's a whole lot of work. It's a whole lot of energy, and it creates inflammation. Every time they destroy those things or they go after them, it's creating inflammation, okay? So again, that can be overwhelming for the body. That makes sense, right? It makes sense. The fourth one is dysregulated blood sugar. So we already named the type 2 diabetes, but in general, a lot of people with dysregulated blood sugar who may have not known that they have dysregulated blood sugar seem to then have a much more difficult issue in recovering from COVID. So when I look at these four, though, I say, all right, what do they have in common? Because I'm, I'm big on commonalities, right? So like, can we bucket these? Well, to a degree, we can, right? Because we're looking at what? what? The first we're looking at viral load. Okay, viral load. Well, again, what was going on inside the body? We don't always know. We, we don't always know, right? Autoimmune. Okay, we know there's an autoimmune issue. Uh, previous history with EBV or HPV or CMV or some type of virus. Okay, we've got that. And then there's the dysregulated blood sugar. Doesn't seem to fit, like the blood sugar part, right? Doesn't, doesn't make as much sense. But it does when you look at all four of these are... Two things, exhausting on your body and highly inflammatory, right? The first one was what? Cardiovascular issues, blood pressure issues, diabetes, cancer. Second one was all the autoimmune issues, psoriasis, MS, lupus, rheumatoid, et cetera, right? Hashimoto's, put them all in there. The next one, viral base. Okay, well, your body's working just a little bit every day to keep those uh, herpes-based viruses suppressed. Okay, now, again, it gives it a little bit more leeway when your body's having a full-out attack on this new virus. And then there's the dysregulated blood sugar, which means that you're leading to all sorts of different uh, oxidative stress, free radical damage, and inflammation every single day. And it's also dysregulating your energy. A lot of these come down to energy with the total viral load, the autoimmune, the viral uh, reactivation, dysregulated blood sugar, you are looking at mitochondrial issues as well. Which then leads me to my final point that long COVID is really myalgic encephalomyelitis in disguise with a new name. Because myalgic encephalomyelitis is what? It is brain fog, fatigue, grogginess, low mood, low energy, weakened immune system, inflamed. Sounds a whole lot to me like long COVID, long haulers, post viral inflammatory syndrome, just with a different name. Now, the problem is conventional medicine doesn't have an answer for myalgic encephalomyelitis, the flu-like symptoms that you suffer from every day. So what they do is they give it a new name. Oh, we don't know yet what to do for this. Oh, we don't know. We do. We do. We just can't look to conventional medicine to have every single answer to be solved by a pharmaceutical drug. It's just not going to happen. But why don't we look at over time, not tomorrow, but over the next 12 to 16 weeks, rebalancing the body through what it needs in order to be able to heal. And if we do that, not only do we overcome these health issues that we're talking about here today, but we live a brand new healthy life. Meaning you can't overcome long COVID, if you want to call it, without beginning to look at why it was caused in the first place. Now, if you can do that with a fresh set of eyes, ears, you know, every sense you have, and really keep an open mind, and you look at, wow, I wonder why this happened in the first place. You stay open, right? Objective. I really believe that this could be an opportunity for a lot of people in disguise, of course. Believe me, I know. I understand. I went through this myself. Believe me. I went through it more years than I cared when I was younger in order to overcome all my different health issues. And that included myalgic encephalomyelitis, right? So we have to understand is that if we keep an open mind, we continue to work the progress, we will figure it out. And, uh, and again, it could be one of the biggest blessings you've ever had. So hopefully this was helpful. If you want any details or links to any different articles, research, head on over to today's show, which is stephencabral.com forward slash 2204. And as I said, I will also link up the past virus update shows as well. Take care, everyone. Feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care. <laughs>